How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Anthem video. I'm Kios Prime and today we have a lot of news to get through. Lots of social media Q&A, potential new region coming with new DLC and story that will continue with each evolving DLC update. If you enjoyed this video, show the video and the channel some love, drop a like, subscribe and share. So on to the video. It seems Bioware is not content with everything else, it seems they are now giving us teasers about this Sunday. Potentially Shaper Storms? I hope so, and man do I hope I'm online at the time. For those of you that do not know, Shaper Storms are supposed to be these open world events that dynamically take place, which was last seen at the 2017 E3 presentation. So fingers crossed what Chad mentioned in the blog is actually a Shaper Storm. Fingers crossed. That's not all however. We get to hear a bit about the future of Anthem. The game's not out yet and we're getting information about what's coming in the future and what to expect in the coming months as they work hard to bring us more exciting content. It reads, There are a lot of things coming post launch. We have many different teams who have been working on that stuff for a few weeks already. So you can see different cosmetic items, different creatures, maybe a new region to explore. Whoa, that's a big one, right? They're already mentioning new regions, so this is definitely something that's on the card. You'll have different events, different weather states, shaper storms. Anthem is a dynamic world. If you have rain right now, it applies to your jets. You can fly for longer as it cools down your jets. You can use electricity and therefore create larger effects. Try to imagine that we can create different weather states and apply that. So not only are new parts of the world going to behave differently, but old parts of the world as well. If it's a day or if it's a night, some creatures may show up or may be more powerful. We can play with all of these variables and create a new narrative for the game. PvP is not available for launch, but it's going to depend on the feedback that we get from the player base. And this is pretty important. So for PvP to actually exist, it's player dependent. It's the community that will decide whether or not PvP is going to be a thing. So we now know there may be a new map coming with future DLC. We know PvP is now fully and officially community dependent. In fact, right now on their Reddit page, there is a thread discussing this very topic. Go express your view and let your voice be heard in this regard. Pretty cool and exciting stuff if you ask me. If that wasn't enough, we already know the core design of Anthem is designed with future in mind. Lead writer Kathleen Rootstart said the game has been designed so that the devs can add story for years to come, saying the content could range from a new moment with a character, a world event, or even a new storyline and plot, which is obviously the preferred one, right guys? Because for me, story is one of the most fundamental things in a game like this. It keeps it fresh, exciting, and interesting. As stories evolve, so do the characters, we find out more, we meet new characters, the world becomes more interesting, and as we expand the world space, the map, or even a new map completely or a new region, it'll be interesting to see how the two regions connect. Will there be aid coming from one? I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. So. But for me, this is really awesome, really exciting. PvP is now completely community dependent. There's a thread in Reddit right now that you can go to and air your voice, and I advise everyone to do that if you actually want to make your voice heard. Semi-confirmation that there will be a new region. Pretty big stuff if you ask me. It's not fully confirmed because they did say maybe a new region to explore, but that's just basically putting the carrot out and getting us excited. There obviously is going to be one at this point. At least I hope so. With that said, and that out of the way, it's been a while since I've done a social Q&A. Well, it's back guys, so let's dive right in and get to these questions. So we all know last week's VIP demo didn't really go so well. Well, at Anthem Game, tweeted out, as a further thank you, all four javelins are available now in the forge for players who have played in this weekend's demo. Won't get a chance to jump in? Don't worry about it, they will be waiting for VIP participants next weekend. Log out and log back in to see them if you're in game. Now that was obviously for the VIP demo, however if you did take part in the VIP demo, if you entered the game and actually played, the demo that comes on the 1st of February this Friday, you'll have all four javelins to pick from. Pretty cool stuff and a really nice gesture. Sadly, this is only for the VIP players, not for the non-VIP players. Now I know what you're thinking. Chaos, you're gonna say. I couldn't get into the game or I tried for hours, couldn't get in and I gave up. What about me? 
Well, Michael Gamble has you covered. If you pre-ordered but were otherwise unable to participate in the weekend demo because of timing or bugs, we are looking at ways to grant you bonus vinyls. Don't worry. And with this, I assume, don't quote me on this, but I assume you'll also get your four javelins. And the last point I wanted to touch on as Ma on the Rocks kindly asked, what the hell guys, what went wrong? If you had a later build, why didn't you simply use it? Mark Dora said, we did branch in early December to stabilize and make the necessary changes. There are thousands of differences, big and small in there. Despite this, there is still a lot to be learned. And by that, they mean real world testing because basically all their controlled environment testing led them to believe that the build that they had was stable and good enough. The moment it went out into the open world and with different ISPs, things just broke down very, very, very quickly as we saw. So hopefully this Friday's demo will be better and the lessons that they say they did learn, they have learned. Because after all, the demo that we're getting on Friday is basically the VIP demo basically being patched. So hopefully it's all going to be working. Next we move on to some Q&A that is actually pertinent to the actual game itself. Gamer Groins asks, are you guys going to make it easier for the Colossus? Because I feel as if with no shield, it's hard to stay alive since your health doesn't regenerate and I feel as if the enemies did too much damage, especially on normal as I was dying a lot. Ben Irving said, we'll look into it. Thank you for the feedback. I think one of the biggest problems here was the fact that one, people didn't realize that by pressing circle, you could get your shield out. Believe me, they didn't because I have a friend that was playing Colossus and well, he genuinely didn't realize until like two days later that he actually has a shield. I mean, mind blown, I know, but it's for real that he genuinely didn't know he had a shield. So based on that comment, I do believe that's the case. However, that doesn't deteriorate from the fact that Colossus's health pool is really low and the shield takes too much damage too little quickly, which basically means the shield health is really low as well. And the fact that we can't actually see our health or shield levels and what we're getting upgraded by is kind of silly. It's ridiculous, really. It's an RPG. It's all about stats and stuff like this. So we should have this there. And it is something that they're actually looking at. Just it won't be there for launch. It's definitely going to be there for post launch, but they are looking to add that screen. But if you get a mod component that's specific to the Colossus, it gives you a lot of health and a lot of shield. You can get two or three of these, you're pretty much golden. However, they have confirmed on their Reddit and on their Discord that Colossus Health is something they're looking at and they are going to up it to make it that bit more beefy. Brens then asks, any performance optimization waiting for us in either public demo or release build? Or was this weekend's demo performance what we can expect going forward? Not talking server performance, actual in-game frame rate, latency and stuff. Mark Dara said, likely not much for next weekend, but there is things in the main game. So the main game, which is the latest build, has a lot of these issues fixed. And a lot of the issues that was being raised with the actual VIP demo was already things that were fixed in the latest build, which again raises the question, why have two so distinctive builds? But I'm not going to get into that right now because I've covered that in the previous video and my position and stance there is clear. So if you want to get into the discussion, please watch that video. But with this one here, they, a lot of this stuff is fixed in the main release. But for this Friday, there will be performance tweaks, nothing to the extent that there will be in the latest build. So this next one is something that really, really annoyed me and aggravated me when I was playing with my friends when we actually could get on. Captain Gallant, is there an option to promote to leader in the full game when in groups? It wasn't in the demo, I don't think. It really, it actually wasn't. There were, I looked everywhere, it wasn't. At least it wasn't in the actions tab. Ben Irving said, yes, this is really cool quality of life update something that was actually missing and I spent a good while trying to find it. I looked in all menus and tabs, it wasn't there. And it was something that I really wanted because sometimes my friends got into an instance and I couldn't get in, so I wanted to pass the lead. So if something like that happened, I could just, you know, transfer in. But the bottom line is, promote to leader will be a thing come the main launch. Dustin asks, is there a way to stay in the same squad when backing to the fort? Seems like every time we backed, we had to add each other again seemed repetitive, just wondering if I was doing something wrong. Ben Irving said, if you formed the party when you started, then you stay in the party. If you matchmake with strangers who become friends, you can invite them to a party also. So if you go into a free play or if you go into a mission with four players, when you come back, you will have all four in a group. The demo was obviously not having this, but the final release will. Whether or not this will be in for the demo on Friday, is yet to be determined. My guess is no. 
Jimmy Page asked, is the walking speed in the fort going to be updated at all for the next demo? Maybe for launch? I mean, like a little? Please? I'd take a brisk walk at this point. Ben Irving said yes for launch, so it won't be in the demo, so we will be crawling around Fort Tarsis forevermore as long as the demo is here. But hey, at the moment, not much of Fort Tarsis is open, right? So it's not that big of a deal. So something I raised in my previous video, and something that was raised on Reddit as points and concerns, is waypoints. Waypoints simply are needed in this day and age in video games. They are. It's that simple. They, Especially in a game like this, where you don't have a minimap on screen, waypoints is really cool, so if people are playing free play and are all over the place, you could just set a point and everyone knows where they're going. But it wasn't and isn't a feature in the demo or the latest build. Ben Irving said, we hear your feedback on waypoints in free play. We like the idea, but it's not something we will have for launch. But they will have it at a later date as a quality of life update. Umi asked, is this still in the game? And what you're seeing on screen now is the weapon he's referring to, Jarrah's Wrath. It does look pretty swanky, right? Ben Irving said, we have a weapon with the same name. It's now different in functionality. I wonder what it could be. What could it be? Next question, Pete Smith. Okay, I tested. Private missions, killed one mob, exited, zero experience. So it looks like no experience per kill, only for completing feats, and of course, mission XP. Can you confirm? And the answer was, confirmed. So, stop killing the grabbits. They don't give you any XP. Okay? Next we have a question from Dennis Ebers. Do we get blueprints for Legion of Dawn gear, legendary weapon, etc. so we can re-roll them later like during endgame, or are the items from the special edition only meant to be a starting boost to help you reach level 1520 quicker? Ben Irving said, meant to give you an edge at the start of the game only, so the legendary weapon you get for pre-ordering, both in the basic version of the game and the Legion of Dawn version of the game, they are the same weapon, is a level 5 weapon, and it is a high rated level 5 weapon, so it may last you to like level 10, level 12, but at some point it's going to become redundant and you will need to upgrade from it. And there is nothing else of use for that weapon other than placing it in your vault and keeping it in your collection. That is it, there is no way to upgrade that weapon. After the whole MTX picture came out, people started asking questions. Will you be able to use shards for buying materials or crafting or blueprints and things like this? Ben Irving said, you can spend coin on a limited amount of crafting materials each week. Coin is the earned currency, not the paid currency. Essentially, the only thing that you can use in-game to actually get stuff is stuff you unlock, your time for gathering, and a bit of coin, which is the currency you earn, in order to get some materials if you're short or low on supply. The paid currency, the shards, will only be used in the cash shop, and the cash shop will have no crafting materials of any kind. It will be cosmetic 110% only. And the final question of the day, Terry Mitten. So are we stuck with the Ranger until we level up on the full game or do we choose our first Javelin because I love the Colossus? Big it up to Terry Mitten right now, people. That guy's a legend. He has officially become a member of the Colossus Club. Jonathan Warner said after the tutorial, which is around 10, 20 minutes, you get to choose your starting javelin. So you can pick a Colossus, Ranger, or an Interceptor. Cause well, let's face it, no one really wants to play Storm now, do they? Right? Everyone's gonna probably go with the Colossus, then maybe shift along with the remnants of people going to maybe the Interceptor, then a bit of the Ranger. But I mean, I can't see anyone really picking a Storm. Can you guys? Let me know, come on. I mean, you guys agree with me on this, right? And well, that's pretty much everything. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. New regional map potentially confirmed. Shape of Storm possibly this Sunday. Evolving story with future content being the backbone of all DLC that comes along. PvP being now officially community dependent on whether it arrives or not. Lots of quality of life updates coming. Colossus getting a buff. Jarrah's Wrath now having completely changed in functionality. Still wondering what it could be actually, but there you go. I don't know, that's a lot of cool information there coming from the back of everything. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope it was useful, informative, and if it was and you want to support the channel, you want to support the video, drop a like, subscribe, and more importantly, don't forget to share. The more you share, the more exposure it gets, 
the more the channel grows and the more I get happy. You can also follow me on Twitter and you can also join my Discord with the details for both in the description below. So until next time, Javaliers, keep it safe, keep it real. I'll see you on Friday on PSN in the world of Anthem. And remember, when you see me to act cool, remain legend.